Hey everybody, it's Mary Beth with Sacred Grove. And today I'm interviewing Karen Edgett. And I met Karen when she and I worked together to do some healing for her kitty, Allie. And um, we had great success, which makes me very happy. And then Karen started talking to me about her art and the fact that, that art and healing are very intertwined for her. So, you know, when I, when, when I do things with animals, I always think about the healing aspect of the relationships and helping people and animals understand each other better. And so I don't think I'm, Karen and I are, are too far off in where we, where we see healing as an important part of our, our, uh, our life and what we do. So let me, let me read Karen's bio just so people, and Karen, I'm so glad you're here, by the way. So Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, I, I'm so excited. So let me talk about, uh, let's talk about Karen a little bit and, and then start letting you say some things. Karen is an artist. If you didn't get that from what I just said, she works in the contemporary realms and you'll see some of her art right behind her. She works with flowers, symbols, and words. She paints in acrylic, does mixed media, she does printmaking and photography. Here's a part I love. Her art is about shifting consciousness with healing, prayer, unity, working on a new earth. Her intention is to create or agitate for a new, more peaceful and a harmonious existence. Um, those are big pieces I have in the back of my head. I'm working at the you and your animal place, but I'm always like, yeah, if we get, if we get ourselves uh, more in line with our animals and shells, I know that's going to have an effect on the world. So Karen's just right out there blatantly saying, let's, let's, let's shift the world. So <laughs> I love it. Um, she grew up in Erie, Pennsylvania. She received her Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from Edinburgh University. And where is that, Karen, just so I'm clear? That's actually just south of Erie, and I wish it was in Edinburgh, but at the time of my life, all I could do is find a school with a cool name. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, wow, why, uh, you know, can you do a Spanish, uh, excuse me, a Scottish pro for me? But no. No, I can't, but I, but our, our basketball team, um, the girls' basketball team was the last one to get rid of skirts because they had to wear, they, I mean, it was the thing to wear kilts for all the teams. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, so after Edinburgh, you came here to Washington, D.C. And uh, within five years, you, she uh, started her own advertising agency, which she ran for 20 years. She was also a foster parent, one of the most awesome experiences of her life. Uh, life took a major turn when she invented a wristband that modded her sun exposure. She did this with NASA scientists. She also became a certified nutritional cook. I'm just awed by some of the things you've, you're doing. Uh, both of these experiences have taken Karen around the world. She currently teaches cooking techniques and blogs, recipes of, uh, she, that she created. In addition, she focuses on her deep passion for creating art and using art to heal herself, others, and agitate for a new way of being. One of her longtime volunteer efforts is, is working with the INSPIRE Project, a, Na a NASA-based STEM program in the District of Columbia. And so let me ask about the STEM. That's getting, uh, talk to me about that. I, I, I we, I looked it up, but I can't remember what it stands for. So can you talk a little bit about STEM, Karen? Yeah, it basically is just um, getting, uh, it's just concentrating on the uh, mathematics and science programs. And it's trying to encourage kids to become interested in mathematics and science. And the biggest thing with our program is that we um, give scholarships out of high school for anybody who wants to get into that in the, within the District of Columbia. And we also um, take a, except for this year, we take a bunch of kids down to uh, space camp, NASA space camp down in um, Huntsville, Alabama. 
And one year, instead of doing that, we took about 17 of them down to work with NASA on experiments, and that was during the eclipse. So it's basically just, you know, every year we're just trying to get people who are mostly people who are underserved, you know, minority communities or people who don't quite have as many resources. A lot of the kids we work with, that's the very first time they've flown. And, you know, it's, it's really just a fun experience all around for them. Oh, that's and, so cool. Yeah, so we work with all kinds of, um, yeah, and it's, it's worth looking up. It's the Inspire Project, looking it up online. And uh, I'll, I'll send you a link to. Okay, okay, we'll get, that in. we'll get that in the, it'll be down. When I get this up, it'll be down there uh, in the description. Wonderful, thank you for that. So t tell me a little more about your art, uh, please. I, I mean, just general, like, when you say mixed media, truthfully, I think I know what it means, but I'm not sure, so. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, I work a lot with uh, any kind of media that, that comes my way um, that I feel like a picture needs, but it ends up being a lot of right now. It ends up being a lot of just crayons and pencils and acrylic and chalk, you know, whatever I, you know, something's there that'll help, you know, instill more movement or the right color. And it's a different medium. I just pick it up and use it. Sometimes I use collage. Um, Sometimes I make a bunch of cutouts of hearts and I start adding them to things. <laughs> oh, I so, love it. Yeah, so um, it's mixed media is not, you know, it's not necessarily sculptural in my context, but I don't hesitate to, you know, throw something in there from outside if I find it too, a little twig or a flattened flower or something. Very good, thank you. Um, so maybe, I. Maybe we start, here's the, here's the three things that I've got in my topics and maybe we start where you think it makes the most sense. I, and because you did a picture of me and my cat shadow, and by the way, this is Bunny back here. She's melding into the sun, uh, but that's my cat Bunny. Um, you did a picture where you took a picture of me and shadow, my cat, and we created it with flowers and infused the essence of the flowers in it. And it's very lovely. Uh, so I, I was curious about the healing energy of colors, of flowers. And then art is healing. Uh, if we start, if we can talk about that for a little bit, any, any way that you like. Um, sure. Um, I almost think of art as healing, but also as transformational. So... The healing part is 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 a process of transformation because you're basically moving your energy to some place where it's stuck or in pain to some place where it's you know not stuck you know it's flowing like it's supposed to be flowing and you're at peace and you're you're freed up from the pain or from the 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 problem that you had and I I find that a lot of people's pain is well, even just from myself, you know, a lot of my pain, you couldn't really discern if it was, it may felt physical, but it might have been emotional and it might have been someone else's pain and it might have been like, you know, I don't know, something that happened to me when I was young and it came back or, you know, sometimes it's real obvious. You picked up something too heavy and, you know, you've got a pulled muscle, but for the most part, you know, it, healing is transforming yourself and energy is you know, we're all energy and the work that you see behind me was um, a lot of my, that's where I'm working with the symbol of infinity and I'm trying to unleash it and open it up because opening up that actually helped me open a lot of rigid energy that was stuck in me. And that, you know, all the things that people tell you you should, would, could have done, you know, how mm -hmm. you fit into society versus how you fit into your own heart. And these pieces opened me up and, and, and allowed me to start thinking from my own essence and allowed me to start being myself. And I use a lot of colors that some colors are energetic. There's a little tiny piece in the bottom there that's very energetic. That to me is like when you're having like a really uh, elated day and you're joyful and you're like want to really do something excited. And a lot of the a lot of oh, the it. right right behind it it's yeah right behind you i see that yeah sometimes oh, yeah, yeah. 
like that. And um, a lot of my colors though are calming and peaceful colors because I feel like for me, I did, you know, I, she didn't, Mary Beth didn't mention, but I've also ran an advertising agency for 20 years. And so, you know, inventing a product and running an ad agency, those were all really stressful things. And I didn't feel like I was always being true to my own essence. And so calming myself down through my art, using colors like blues and that were calming. And then eventually I started working with a lot of pinks, which are, I'm gonna twist my zoom around real quick. You can see some of my pink mm -hmm. art over there, pinks and reds, because they actually open up your heart and they allow you to, um, it's pink is the energy of, of, of the heart. It's a very high, bright, vi high vibrating energy. And so you start to feel like everywhere you go, you can, you can bring your heart with you, your, your, your essence with you. How about, you know, those of us who don't consider ourselves artists, we don't do paintings and things like that. Um, how would we, how, how, is there a way we could start doing some simple things uh, to connect to that with physically? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, really all you have to do is start to become present, present with your own breath, present with your own self. And you can do it, um, I mean, there's an, a lot of tools that just help you do that. Certainly taking a few minutes a day to meditate would help. Um, sometimes yoga helps that's a it's an exercise that people think of as a stretching exercise but it's actually a meditative practice to do yoga and it is a whole body experience but even just going on a walk you know just taking the time for yourself every day and thinking about not thinking but actually just feeling how do you feel you know and and what's really going on deep inside journaling is an excellent way if you allow yourself 10 20 minutes a day to just just write. Don't worry about it. Don't edit it. You know, put it under lock and key if you don't want anyone to read it, but or burn it. But it's it's just a <laughs> fabulous way to um, start getting into your heart and start getting into your own essence because that's it. Really doesn't matter what you do. I mean, even just even just being kind to yourself in the smallest of ways, um, and even being kind to others. You know, like for instance, changing your attitude about giving people money on the street is a good one. Like a lot of times you don't give people money or you, you give people money and you think in the back of your head, they're just going to spend it on alcohol or drugs. Just, just giving it as a gift, you know, forget about the judgment. And, and it's like, you know, allowing them the autonomy that you would like actually like to have yourself or no one judges you for any, any way you spend your own money, you know, and just, just even just shifting a thought yeah. pattern actually yeah. starts bringing yeah. I, it I in. have gone through that too. Yeah. You know, I, just yeah. Give it. I just give it and say, well, you know, yeah, it's me. I'm giving myself the gift by just handing it off and letting them make their decision. Right. Because we all have an essence, a truth to ourselves and to judge other people's truths is actually really just judging ourselves. And that's where a lot of our disease really comes from. Mm -hmm. So it could be art, you know, it could be, walking it could be just the practice of not judging others and most importantly not judging yourself you know when you get up in the day just give yourself a giant hug and say <laughs> you know what you're pretty cool just as you are <laughs> now no, i sound a little like uh, mr rogers but really you know that just the way you are is um is the you know if you can get there e even once a day you know you you've you've made progress in um, transforming your energy. I mean we really are in a topsy turvy world right now. We've got a lot of chaos going on, and the more we can not get involved in that chaos, and the more we can just understand ourselves, the more the it's, it doesn't always make sense this way because we're so used to living in our brains, but the more the solutions for how we're going to transition into a better way of living, you know, one that is more equitable, more free, more um, fair, you know, more harmonious, 
Yeah. We don't need those answers from our brain. We actually need those answers from our soul and our heart. And so however we can connect, you know, and um, if, if you want, I can sort of transition into the flowers at this point, or maybe I was wondering. Um, I just, I just, uh, I was thinking about everything you were said, and I, I'm, uh, because I'm, I'm doing um, some healing uh, on in my Facebook group. I'm more present now when I take my dogs out, and looking for what, what in, what in nature uh, calls to me, and what's special and. Uh, you know, what are the birds doing today? Which flowers are still blooming here in October? And how do my dogs, how are my dogs enjoying the walk? And, um, and that does feel healing to me. So you're right. There's, there's, there's just some simple things. And so, yeah, I'd love, and I'd love you to go into the flowers because um, I, I just think that's such a unique way uh, of helping, helping us heal through your art yeah it's a i started the beginning of this year to transition from my symbols and paintings and to noticing the flowers and taking pictures and they're they just kept calling me and saying come here come here notice <laughs> me i got a message for you i got something to say and at first i was like well i don't know but anyway i i i've amassed you know thousands of photos this year of flowers so it's been a pretty intense year but in essence, the, the, the earth, you know, anything natural has got also the, the answers for us, the transformational answers for us. And it's not something that we're used to connecting to. But anytime you're out there in nature, you can actually, especially this year with less pollution in the air, you can take a breath of air and breathe in the aerosols from trees and plants. You can notice them. You can just you know, just be, you know, they got the messages for you. So anything you can do to connect to the earth is really, you know, it's just so simple and useful to us right now. And the flowers are a very momentary thing. They come up, they're very beautiful. They're, they're like here, la la. And they have all the elemental energy that's contained in mother earth and each flower and in each one is configured slightly differently and so they all have these different messages but yet it's the same message it's a message of transformation and a, and, and just going back to healing is part of transforming transforming or evolving us you know out of this a life of pain and, and, and struggle and living in our brains and one in, in moving into a life of a very soul centered world where people are kind to themselves. And when they're kind yeah. to themselves, they can be kind to others. And so, so um, oh, may, may I ask you, um, you, you said that there's transformation is available in every flower. Um, that's almost hard for me. I mean, I get in at some level. Um, wow. I just had to stop and like, just have a pause on that if it's all right. Um, it just, uh, it just, you know, it's almost my heart's welling up to say, oh, it's right there for us every time. All we got to do is, is stop and look or feel or, or notice. So I, I probably cut you um cut you no no this, but but thank you for letting me stop and say that because it feels important yeah it's a beautiful um it's a beautiful recognition on your part and it's it is important to stop and and notice that you're noticing and that you can notice that and you can receive it you know and all i'm doing is bringing that to people you know i'm taking the pictures i generally crop them in such a way that you're concentrating more on the color and patterns and the hidden messages within a flower rather than just looking at a picture of a daisy you know i've zoomed way in um i often include a little bug or twos because they're often there <laughs> butterfly yeah. whatever they're often there already just totally enjoying the flower and then i have figured out that i can actually create mosaics of these flowers and I can merge them with people or animals or icons um, like you know 
uh, and, and offer that energy like an alchemy. You know, it's like I take the energy of that person and I give them all the energies of these flowers I've collected and all of a sudden, you know, they can actually sense some harmony or some calm or some peace, you know, something that's sort of bringing them back to themselves. You know, it's not, it's not like it specifically has to heal that person entirely. It's more just like bringing you to yourself where you can start to feel like you have the answers inside, you know, you are the, you are the light. And I used it a lot for animals um, in transition from this world yeah. to the next world, because people are often not aware of how much they hate to go and how much, you know, how much, um, you know, love they need in that transformational process. And so the flowers are actually helping them, you know, find peace. And then of course the owners are finding the same peace just by looking at it, the, you know, the flowers and the, and the, the energies of the animal and the energies of the, owners all come together many yeah. of the yeah i was going to say many of the portraits aren't in transition but i've used it a lot for you know even as gifts for people that are or an animal animals in particular in transition i did i've done a few for icons that are in transition this is oh. uh, uh congressman lewis and I used a giant, for him, I used a single flower. I used a giant hibiscus that I got out of the gardens of the Capitol. And that's because this white hibiscus, it's a huge white hibiscus, and that offers um, peace and a sense of um, comfort and nourishment because he also didn't want to leave this world, but I believe he's going to someplace far more powerful for us. And then I used a picture I took of the sunset of the Capitol and and a picture of him that came from the New York Holy cow. magazine. But I, I wanted to help him transition. You know, I wanted to help him move on because, you know, he he gave us a lot of gifts and I, I don't think he's gonna stop working on our behalf. I, I believe strongly in animals and people are here, even if they're not here physically. And it's, that's an example of a single flower. You have. I don't actually have any printouts of the mosaics because I, I get, they go away as soon as I give them. This one's waiting for someone to pick it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but you can see them on my website. But the idea is really an alchemy, you know, taking the energy of the people and, and imbuing it with, you know, peace or harmony or, yes. or you know, a light and love and, and unity and all the wonderful consciousness shifting energies that, we need in this world right now. That's lovely. I, I was just looking to see if I could find the shadow picture that you did for me. Um, to, do you hit, well, let me ask you because it's not coming up right away. Do you, can you talk about maybe a couple different flowers where you, do you really clear about um, what their healing, healing properties are and, and, I'm curious because, I mean, I, I've studied a little bit on my own of plant medicine, of how you make herbal tonics and things from different mm -hmm. things, but, but it feels like this is a, the flower essence that you're talking about might not, maybe not correspond exactly to maybe what the plant offers as a potion, so I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, and so I, I struggle with that all the time because when I do, when I actually am merging a particular person with a particular flower I always let the flower choose the person oh. I don't yeah I don't go in and and read all the essences and use the historical knowledge to I see to do that but then after I've let them choose the person and I I bring them together then I go back and I read I read what everybody's said you know all the people mm -hmm. that are connected to flowers through their essences and it's and it's quite interesting because like for instance, I'm working right now on a portrait for, of somebody with St. John's wort. And St. John's wort and this amazing um, protective shield. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows it as, a, as an amazing pr protective shield, but it's also a connector of um, radiant sunlight, cosmic light. And it in fact was used 
by John the Baptist to recognize Christ consciousness coming in, that kind of light can be recognized through the St. John's Ward. So when I had already chosen to pick the flower, I was like, I don't know if this person's going to be really excited to find out how this cosmic light is being infused in her image or if she's going to be like, oh, well, let me just like the picture. <laughs> so it doesn't really, it's almost like I don't want to get hooked up on the past in any way, shape or form. That's one of the reasons I like the flowers because their messages are here. They're very, very timely. The energy is very timely. We're not going to something that was done two years ago, one year ago or a hundred years ago to because I feel like this is what we need to do to shift into the new consciousness that's going to reveal all the answers that we don't know yet on how, you know, how we're going to do what we're going to do next. And so another, another rose that I used recently, um, a peach rose I used for, um, RBG because I really wanted to do a piece for RBG. Um, you can find that on my website, but I didn't even write about this on my website, but the peach rose really gets you connected with your angelic, um, your angelic side of you. And I thought that was an interesting choice. I found the rose right at the Supreme court. So I was like, you know, I want a flower from right here because <laughs> I don't think she's going anywhere. I mean, everybody's yes. all sad that she died, but I'm like, oh, I think she's going to a place far more powerful. And I just, I want to, so it connects you with your, your inner spirit and your freedom and your angelic qualities. And then I also, um, because it was a rose, the rose is known for quieting your mind and yeah. bringing you more into your heart. And the rose is one of my favorite flowers to just work with because I get to smell them too. And the rose has the highest vibrating energy of scents, their aromatics of all the flowers out there. And so I just go and personally get a transformational experience just by smelling the roses as I'm taking their pictures. <laughs> So that's kind of silly. That's kind of silly. But, you know, anything that gets you in your body and grounded to the earth is going to, you know, it's going to calm you down right now and, and connect you to, you know, connect you to yourself. And that's really the important piece here. Cool. Hey, you know what? I found the picture. Can Let me see if I can share it. The one yeah. you did with me in shadow. Let me just. Oh, wonderful. Let's share screen. Okay. So here we are, um, and it's, a, it's there's me, and then here is, I, I hope you can see, I'm using my um, cursor, which you can't see, but below me you'll see my little black cat with her little beautiful eyes, and you did this for me, um, and turned it into uh, a beautiful work of art, photograph, uh, image for us to, um, and I look at it and I feel real connected to her. I feel um, how we were meant to be together. And um, I don't know if there's anything else that you felt when you did this. I, I'm just curious if you had any more uh, insights into. Well, I this. spent a long time, I spent a long time moving this mosaic around, which has over 256 photos in it of wow. flowers. And it was a trick because there were some messages for you in that and the, and the messages for your shadow and the messages for you guys together. And so the arrangement of these flowers, I spent a lot of time on just, you know, it's a, it's a very channeled um, intuitive process for me. And I just, I move them and I move them and I move them and all of a sudden it comes together and I'm like, okay, there's, there's the magic, there's the alchemy. And I, I just, I remember spending a lot of time on you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Just, I can feel it again. I can feel this again. Yeah. And it's actually for me, when I do this, it's a prayer for somebody, you know, basically it's, it's a, it's a gift of, it's a gift of love and, and harmony and light. And, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a living prayer in a way, even though it's a photograph, you know, it's there that is supposed to give you something every time you look at it. And it's, it's working in the background, even if you don't look okay. at it. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Thank you. So that there's a good example. Let's go back. There we go. 
Good, thanks. Thank you. Now people got to see, you know, what an example of, of many flowers in a picture. Uh, how about um, specific vibrations, specific vibrations of colors? Uh, you talked a little bit about that in the beginning. Um, is there anything else that uh, might be useful for us to think about? Yeah, I mean, I mentioned about um, pink being a high vibration color and blue being a calming color. Um, mm -hmm. But I want to say something specifically about gold because I've been given a lot of messages recently about gold. And I'm not talking about just metallic gold. I'm talking about sunlight gold. It's, oh. a, it's a very radiant color and it contains all the other colors in it. And it's a color that something that is available to us by just being in the sun or noticing the sun through the windows or looking at a picture of sunlight, you know, it's there for all of us to access at any given time. And this light is actually a gift from, not so much from the earth, this time it's a gift from the cosmos, something we can't really change. It's just a pure gift and it, it, it's, it's something that will help us move into our soul, full living, our, living through our soul and out of just using our mind and, and enforcing everything and just allowing things to unfold. It is a very transformational color right now and you can almost invite it into your heart. And once you've invited it into your heart, you can open your heart like a door and see the gold emanating out and you can use it to look at anything. You can gaze at your pet with that gold light. You can gaze at other people with that gold light. You can take it to another level, which is to notice the gold light coming out of others. Oh. And that very simple process of using the golden light can change so much so easily. It's not, something you really have to effort at and it's, it's something that's there and available to everybody that's that's, so that's my that's my color lesson for the day <laughs> that's a good one because it's if um once you once you you get um the connection between imagination creating reality um like it's not just gee i'm having this lovely thought but there's actually something happening there when i imagine that gold energy coming out and seeing it in others then that's again healing and transformation um so i i invite i invite the folks who are listening to just um how do we say is don't let your head get in the way just do it imagine it and see where it goes because that's the key to really uh changing our vibration and maybe helping the planet move forward yeah absolutely absolutely and we will i mean honestly there's more people living from our soul than any other time in history of humanity and there are a lot of us out there and it just needs to be more and even if you only do it for 30 seconds a day you know work it up 30 seconds a day and maybe the next day you could do it two minutes but all of that is just so simple and so important. And as things get a little more chaotic, which they will in 2021, if you're able to use the golden light at all, even if you're using it to journal or using it when you walk, you know, in, integrating it with anything, breathing it in, breathing it out, you know, in any small way, in any portion of the day, you're going to be part of a solution instead of being rolled around in the chaos. Yeah, I love um, that. No matter what happens and how it unfolds, because we have to use a new consciousness to build something new up. You know, it may, you know, it just, and we don't need to worry about what that is. We just need to get out of the way. <laughs> Well, that's oh, reassuring because I, I don't know. I just want to always choose. I want to, I'm like you. I, 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 I'm, I'm just going to choose right now to, to feel the good. If, and I like the gold coming out pink. It's funny because of the healing that came to me more than a few times is that the pink feels like soul, unconditional love. And then I'd always see little gold 
sparklers, like sparklers when you're a kid, remember, in there. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the first healing combinations of colors. And it's lovely to hear, lovely to hear you validate that those are really two really... Oh, yes. They're country. really both powerful colors. And it's, it's just gold. It's like the golden light, you know, it's just so... I don't know. It's, it's, it's a beautiful, uh, it's just a beautiful opportunity that exists right now. I'm very, very excited about that. So <laughs> use, your, use your colors. Use, if you're going to use your mind at all, use your imagination. Don't worry too much about, you know, don't worry too much about thinking as far as the traditional thought, like, well, how are we going to get all the trash off the earth? You don't have to do that. You can actually just, you know, look at the trash with golden rays, you know, and see the gold in the trash. And then that's enough, you know, I mean, you can pick some up if you want, but you don't have to take on the entire um, process and the answers will come. I mean, maybe it is that soon you start picking up trash, but you know, somehow it actually makes a real difference versus right now, if you just go out and pick up trash, it feels futile. <laughs> we don't want to feel futile. We want to feel the, soul em emanating <laughs> yeah i need i need uh to feel it i i need remembrance that what i do matters so this is really good thank you yeah everything you do matters and that's 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 part of living from your soul is understanding you know taking a breath matters taking a breath in a golden light you know that's 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 a double matter but it doesn't you know the one didn't matter i mean the one didn't count you know you yeah. both count they both count. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Well, um, this has been lovely. This has been really lovely. Um, could you, should you, sp I'll put it in when I, I'll put it down in the, the information will be down, but could you spell your website out for us in case people want to go and check it out? Sure. It's Karen. My first name is Karen, K-A-R-I-N. That's the only thing that makes it hard. And my last name is Edget, E-D-G-E-T-T. -E and then it's dot art, Karen Edget dot art. Okay. Thanks so much, Karen. Okay. Thank uh, you. And I, thank you for all the work you've done for Ollie too. It's just been an absolute pleasure working with you. I'm so glad. And he's Me so too. Happy. I mean, I've loved it too, of course, but thank you for saying that. Yeah. It's just yeah. been wonderful. All right. Thanks. Have a wonderful day. And thank, thank you, you for the talk. All right. <laughs> bye bye.